Good afternoon and welcome to Day the Wapardo Party Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Lance Stacy, and joining me today for MCK Friday are Chief on the Kirby, uh, Eric Doucette, uh, legal, legal, services. legal Services, as well as a Communications Guy. Guy. <laughs> Joe, Joe, I forgot his name, Della Rose. No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing, Joe. Uh, um, so today we're going to be talking about the uh, Ganawage Cannabis Control law and trying to get this to uh, uh, out to the community information sessions as well as starting the set steps for CDMP process. Mm -hmm. Correct? Correct. So I guess uh, maybe we could just give a little bit of background uh, regarding the law itself. Maybe just highlight well, for a, the a community. The, the history. Yeah. Um, of course the federal um, announcement came in the fall of 2015 and in the spring of 2016, we did start to uh, organize ourselves and take a more of a proactive approach uh, for the community and looking at what the um, conditions would be for the community. So we did start a working group together and, and looking at exactly what the federal legislation would be and what we would need to do for, um, for Gunawage. <clears throat> so in the fall of 2016, we had our first presentation at the Golden Age Club, and it was there that we um, the presentation was given on it, what was currently happening already. They did have... Um, some might know that their, the medical cannabis has been around for about 10 years previous to that. And so if anybody had a uh, prescription, they were able to access medical cannabis for, for their needs. Um, throughout the year of 2017, we did a lot of um, research on what other communities were doing. We did visit uh, other communities also to see what, you know, some of their concerns and um, the working group, as, as a working group, we did decide to put together uh, legislation. And over the, the, in the past year too, we've had several community meetings um, to explain what the, uh, the draft law is all about and, and trying to answer questions for community members. In addition, we did have a, a sort of a business person's uh, info session and um, looking at you know, what some of the interests might be for community members. A question, what were some of the input from the community? Like, what were some of the biggest concerns or what were things that, that um, you know, that people questioned and, and just in the input from just the basic information? Well, one of the things, uh, the recommendations that we did find from our, our within our working group, which included uh, the chief peacekeeper and the executive director of KSCS, was to raise the age limit uh, from 18 to 21. Um, and and also following with the federal legislation, not having uh, any type of facility near a school, you know, there's, there's certain uh, standards that have to be followed. But um, the, the other thing I think was uh, that Ganawage would not permit any home cultivation. So that is uh, one thing that uh, both the provinces of Quebec and Manitoba have decided to uh, to implement, um, which goes contrary to the, the Federal Cannabis Act, because the Federal Ca Cannabis Act actually allows up to four plants. Um, so based on our, uh, the, the recommendations we received from both KSCS and the peacekeepers, that's another thing that they mentioned, is that uh, they, they didn't want to allow a home cultivation because it would be too difficult to track. Um, children would be uh, at, in, in these homes and would essentially uh, have access to, to the plant. Um, so we decided uh, to, to follow that recommendation and implement that. And just to be clear, uh, you have to remember that there is a draft out there. Right. The draft was based on a lot of input. Um, last year, uh, there was a, a technical survey that went out. We talked to probably almost 300 people to get their thoughts on what they thought Gahnawaga should do. So a draft was put together, but really, it's a draft. So whatever's out there now is the basis for discussion when we come to the community decision-making process. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I think that 
uh, Rhonda, you and many of the chief and council anyway, are, are comfortable that the draft does reflect uh, a lot of what was said. Now, it doesn't mean everybody's going to be happy because we know darn well mm -hmm. that there are people who are saying, we don't want any marijuana in town. It's wrong. It's drugs. It's this. It's that. And and it's going to be difficult. Yet at the same time, you have others saying, "Well, you know what? It's going to be legal everywhere, everywhere else." So what is Ganawagi going to do? Because there's a federal law that's coming in, and the 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 real problem here is that if we just sit back and say, "Well, we're not passing law. We're not doing anything," then federal law applies, and provincial law and regulations will reply. So uh, apply. So what? do we do about it? Do we create something for ourselves or do we just lay back? And, and we know darn well what that answer is. And, and that was the impetus for, for us putting our law together. The original date for the federal uh, law would have been July 1st. So now that it's been extended uh, until October, you know, we, it, it's given us a bit of time because we still had to do some work. We did have the uh, draft available for community members to look at and make comments. Uh, we've since taken those comments back and, and looked at how they can fit into what the existing uh, law that we have. Those have been done, and we that is part of the info session that we're going to be having on August 21st and go back to the community with um, exactly you know, why we put certain things in. Okay, uh, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. And welcome back to the Watarda Party Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Lance Stacy, and today is uh, MCK Friday, and today we're talking about the uh, Gunawage Cannabis Control Law, and joining me in studio are Chief Rhonda Kirby, uh, Eric Doucette from Legal Services, as well as Joe Delaron. And uh, prior to going to break, we were basically talking about having input and how that was going to be, and I guess one of my questions is, is can someone share a little bit about what is going on like say how does the federal part impact how does the provincial like I'm not clear on their law into what's going to impact here in Gunawage. Well, I, I, I think everybody needs to realize that the Federal Cannabis Act, um, as much as we might not be happy with uh, with the notion, will apply uh, to get a law gate. It is a criminal law of general application. Um, it essentially makes amendments to the Controlled Substances Act and the Criminal Code. So anybody who thinks that, uh, that the get a gate cannabis control law will replace the cannabis Act um, needs to realize that, that that's not necessarily the case. The cannabis control law is to regulate the industry in Genoage uh, because, for example, there are no municipal type zoning laws in Genoage. So basically, if somebody applies for a Health Canada production license um, in Gen to, to, to put a production facility in Genoage, you know, given that there's no zoning regulations, they could um, possibly put uh, the, uh, the production facility near near a school and near a residential area and we know that for example the scent even though there, there's a lot of security uh, requirements under the uh, Health Canada regulations um, you know there's a, there's a scent that's involved there I'm pretty sure a lot of people wouldn't be very happy if a big production facility went went up near their homes but um, it's very important to realize that if you uh, sell unlicensed cannabis, meaning uh, cannabis that uh, doesn't have that uh, health cannabis stamp of approval, you could be uh, liable for up to 14 years in prison. Now this makes sense because just last week I saw a commercial on one of the Canadian television and it's the first time I heard anything from a legal perspective about what can happen to you, what's the containment issues for the law. That was the first time and, and it was supposed to have been... Um, 
opened in July, yet here we're in August, and finally a commercial on you can't smoke in the same places as people who smoke, you can't. And I thought it was interesting because I would have thought that would have come out a long time ago because it seemed like it was open for anything when this thing was introduced. And what, what you're mentioning there with regards to where people can actually consume the product, that, that's, uh, that comes from the provincial cannabis regulations. Um, so basically the, uh, the federal government will still um, have control over the production of the product and the quality control and the labeling and the packaging and all that. And they um, authorize the provinces to set up the sale and distribution model. So in, in Quebec, for example, um, we're going to have kind of an SAQ type system. Um, they're, gonna, they're calling it the Société Québécoise de Cannabis. Uh, so basically, um, only the province of Quebec will have the authority to, to sell the product. The cannabis uh, control law in Ganawage deviates from that. So basically, um, there's going to be a, a licensing system for uh, dispensaries uh, in the community. Uh, how many dispensaries there will be is still up for debate. Are there going to be any? Uh, again, that's still up for debate, uh, but uh, but we're going to regulate that portion. However, given that it's a controlled substance, it is a drug, it is, it is dangerous, um, it is very important to also follow the Health Canada uh, rules. So that's why it's a, what we've adopted or what we're proposing is a two-tiered licensing system whereby you would both need a Health Canada license and a local Ganawagi license to uh, essentially offer operate in, uh, in the field of, of cannabis in the territory. Because I know there was even talk of how much you were allowed to personally have. Like it was very limiting. And, yeah, yeah. and it was like the first time I had ever heard, heard that. Right. And that was about two weeks ago. And I was like, wow. You know, finally, you know, they talk about this law, but finally they're starting to put some parameters mm -hmm. around it. Um, each, I ha and each province is um, responsible. It's all, they're different. Yes. There are different regulations for, for each province. And I just wanted to mention, I mean, that the whole reason we're looking at having the law is to ensure the health and safety of the community. And, you know, from our, our visits that we've done in other communities, we've seen, you know, what happens when there are no regulations in place and how important it is for the community to understand that this law is um, <clears throat> would be paramount for us, you know, the community making sure of uh, what's happening out there. I think it's also uh, interesting and important that around, I'm glad you mentioned that, like other other territories. Um, in Quebec, for example, the Jusalin Picard has been inundated by all of the other communities saying, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Ganawaga is... You know, sometimes we feel like, oh man, we're, we're way behind here, um, but we're, we're actually not. We had a, a federal group that came in um, last month, I guess it was, uh, early in the month, about a month ago. And uh, we're talking about some high-level people who came to talk about this and what's going on. And um, they were actually impressed that uh, the law that is being drafted here to be presented to the community for decision is actually, you know, or way ahead of the game and um, you know so there are some good things happening here in terms of, of trying to stay ahead but it's very hard when uh, you know the you're not hearing what does the law mean until the last couple of weeks absolutely so it's very difficult to, to work on that basis because people don't understand what the implications are so we're, we're fighting a battle that's why on August 21st and the 28th we have the info sessions because we can then pass on as as Mohawk Council and working group and whatever the developments as they have been happening here's where we're at and when we come time when it comes time to make the decisions hopefully we have as much correct information as possible so that we all make a, a proper decision because it's a, it's a confusing time for, for everyone. Yeah. And that, that includes, I think, uh, you know, the, the political bodies. Absolutely. And I think one of the other things which is, is not helping, all of a sudden there's all kinds of research and studies saying all the positive things of cannabis, like, I mean, which went out before law enforcement. And I guess as a, as a former addictions worker, I know what it does. I know what it does to people. So, so from my perspective, I have a very close thing. I understand the reason for the law. But, I, you know, I have a concern as a person for young people 
because they think there's nothing wrong with it. And, and it was brought up earlier about the recommendations that came out uh, to bring the age, at least in Ganhawaga, if the community agrees to uh, the, the sale or use, uh, but with the age of 21, it was exactly with that in mind because all the studies show that the, the human brain continues to develop and then it matures around 24, 25, and we try to at least mitigate that by, by offering those suggestions. Unfortunately, it is almost impossible if all of the surrounding uh, communities, provinces, and the country have uh, a different standard. So um, as much as I think we'd like to have put that in, um, the draft says 18, but the real push was for 21. The community still might have a different say, yeah. but uh, you have to realize the difficulties in this. And I mean, there was a lot of uh, very emotional uh, debate at the table about that because everybody wants to do the right thing uh, and and try to protect the younger people because hey you know they, they, the stuff is legal yeah so and those are the most uh, impressionable group I guess age group and it reminds me and I'm gonna go back God 15 years or so with the alcohol law when we first started working on that and that was a similar thing where people want it 21 but if it's accessible in every other community and people are bringing in, we're not reducing the actual use. So we had to look at more harm reduction type things and education and awareness so that people are doing the responsible thing uh, for DWI, DUI, you know, all of those kinds of things. And that was the approach back then, but it's very similar to this. I think we're going to have to ramp up uh, yeah. internally here as well and on exactly that. Yeah. Uh, you know, Educational campaigns. Education. What does it mean you yeah. know the, just having an understanding and part of that even you know that's probably going to some of this is going to come out in these uh, info sessions because Rhonda and the other people in the working group have met with so many people again that survey that was done uh, last year was an intensive one and, and a lot of people participated and there were some surprising findings in there um, you know so um, we have to balance everything to try and come up with something that is ex that is going to be acceptable to the majority of community members because in this case you're never going to have people 100 percent in agreement with, with something it's just not going to happen no and if you're just joining us joining us on k1037 you're listening to data with tarda party line talk show we, uh, it's mck friday and joining me in studio are chief ronda kirby uh eric doucette uh legal uh, services as well as joe delham we're talking about the gone a cannabis control law. I had a question, and it was with regards to um, just the first phase of where you're at. What were people saying were some of Gunawage needs? Because I think that's important. You know, what did people, when they're looking at this law, what were things where people were looking at? Well, certainly to look at uh, education and prevention. Um, you know, that was that was very clear. So, and that's certainly um, you know what we we're looking to do. We, um, we have representatives from KSCS, uh, the peacekeepers, Ungwankari Datsara, who have been on the, the working group these past two years. So, and I, and I just wanted to mention, Joe spoke earlier about Jocelyn Picard, and um, I attended a meeting with the uh, Assembly of First Nations Chiefs of Quebec and Labrador and uh, in the spring, and I, I was, you know, really quite shocked at the lack of knowledge that the majority of chiefs in Quebec do not have. It, their uh, medical directors, it was it actually was a four-day presentation and two days with medical directors and two days with uh, the chiefs. And, you know, we've always talked about Gunawagi being in a very unique situation and, and, you know, what we've been able to accomplish in our community, you know, over the years. And not every community is at the same level. So they're still, you know, looking at um, where do they even begin. Uh, they're well aware that we had already had a draft online, and I know many people have asked accessed it. So it might be the basis for other communities to, you know, to, to really consider. But uh, again, you know, prevention and uh Education is certainly uh, on the uh, top of the list. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the the, the alcohol before because um, alcohol has been it hasn't always been legal. No, you go back no. to the years of prohibition. I mean, they sell prohibition beer. One of the companies has prohibition beer that has no alcohol in it, and it become you know. Um, 
and, and it's legal, and now people just under understand that it's um, it's a stimulant or whatever you want to call it. It's actually not a stimulant, but uh, it's it's the opposite. But it, uh, it it causes your you to function differently. It uh, and it, it and can only a problem if it is time. abused. Yeah, you know yeah. they always say, "Oh, nothing wrong with having a glass of wine with dinner." But right. uh, when you're drinking to get yourself uh, completely out of your mind, well, it's problematic. Um, so. But it's been legal for a long time, and uh, so it's kind of understood, and, and you have to fight it a different way. This uh, cannabis is going to be legal, and I think for a lot of younger people, you know, if you've been around the last 10 years and paying attention, well, in the States, Colorado has yes. made it legal. This, these guys have made it legal. It's become a different thing, and there, a lot of younger people have, for them, it's like, well, this is like having a beer for me. So... Again, it really becomes important then to, to deal with, all right, then if that's going to be the basis, so it helps you to relax, well, how do you control just not getting into a position where it affects your work, your ability to drive, your ability to interact with the rest of humanity, or it becomes a problem for you? So that's part of, you know, that's why it's so important to understand that. The law, though it's been drafted as, a, as regulatory, because there have to be some regulations, uh, at some point, you know, it may not be right away. If the community says, you know what, we're, we're staying 100% away from this and there, there's a big, huge decision, I don't actually see that happening, but it's not in, inconceivable that there are, you know, we just say, we're not gonna have it here for the time being. But we still need to have a law so that at some point if that changes, we don't have to go and change everything, build in what's, what needs to be there. And the key, again, is the safety factor because uh, it wasn't that long ago uh, in New York City where somebody bought uh, marijuana. Several people died in New York City. I think it was seven people who died yeah. on, on a weekend. And it was marijuana laced with something. And that's a big concern around here. Uh, that, you know, it, when it's just a free-for-all, you know, somebody, yeah, you know what, maybe I can get somebody to buy more if I give them a more something, a little kick. And you don't know what's in there. This way, with regulations and control, you know what it, what's there. There's even things like mold and stuff like that. Besides that, pesticides. Pesticides. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like there's all these things that we, we need to consider. So it's not always about the business aspect, but just the reality of uh, safety and health. It, it's funny because one of my questions here was guaranteeing not to follow alcohol and tobacco. And I mean, if you look at the tobacco industry, we don't even have to talk black market. Look at the major corporations. As years went on, putting cyanide in it, rat poison, different kinds of things to make it more diff addictive so people would use it. And I mean, these were people who were certified and legal to do it. So my question was going to be around that in terms of enforcement and um, strategies, because I think those are two big industries right now that have a lot to share because it didn't work. You know, so let's not go down that same road again and come out with laws that are not enforceable. You know, and I guess that was going to be my next question. How do we enforce them? <laughs> <I know. laughs> how do we enforce the, the, your question is how do we enforce the It was like, how do we enforce this and how, how is that going, how is that process going to be? Because, you know, you have to think of driving under the influence, dri you know, all of the aspects. It's not just, you know, uh, people selling or what mm -hmm. you can do personally, what you can't do personally. It goes outside of that when you're impacting other people, especially in the community. Because for me, outside you know, they could take care of themselves, but within this community, we have to be able to take care of each other. Well, basically, the uh, the packaging is going to um, is is going to be able to be tracked. Essentially, there'll be DIN numbers like you would have on on drugs and that sort of thing. So that's one of the reasons why it's so important to have to follow the Health Canada model because they're imposing these really really strict obligations. And so when you when you and they can they can follow the the strain, the DNA that they're going to be able to. If there's an issue with, uh, you know, mold in one uh, type of brand, um, they're going to be able to track it back to the source. Um, so that's one of the reasons why um, it's so important to, to regulate the industry. And the other thing is that 
if in Ganawaga we allow uh, an unregulated industry, um, and that's the type of law that we adopt, I think it op opens up the community, whoever's selling the product, the Moral Council of Ganawaga, to liability. If anybody gets sick, uh, and, and Joe gave a good example of, of individuals in uh, in New York getting, uh, getting sick, and uh, we've heard of other instances uh, where people have purchased uh, cannabis from dispensaries uh, in, in Canada, in Canada, other First Nations, where um, they were buying it for medical purposes, and uh, it had uh, it was laced with something, and they had uh, some uh, medical they had seizures, I believe. So, I mean, obviously, these are the situations that we want to avoid. Um, we want to make sure that anybody who's purchasing the product uh, is purchasing legal, uh, quality product, and. Um, and uh, I think that's that's the only real way to proceed. And also, it's to ensure that the reputation of the community and the territory remains intact. Because all you need is for somebody to get really sick off of some product that's bought in the territory that is unlicensed or what have you, and you know it gets out there. Nobody's going to want to come to the community uh, anymore, take the chance to come to the community to 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 buy the product, especially when. You know, it, cannabis is going to be readily available all around us. It's going to be the, the, the government of Quebec is going to be selling it, and they've already mentioned that they're going to be keeping the the uh, taxes quite low on it in order to uh, stamp out the black market. Therefore, if somebody has the option um, it, to purchase licensed product versus unlicensed product. Um, at a comparable price, where do you think they're going to buy it? So I think it's also it's also a, economically it makes sense to follow the the Health Canada rules at this point in time. Okay, we worked our way to our second break, and we'll be right back. And welcome back to Data with Our Dog Party Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Lance Stacy, and today is MCK Friday. And today we're speaking with uh, Chief Rhonda Kirby as well as Eric Doucette, Legal Services and uh, Communications uh, Officer uh, Joe Delaronde. And we're talking about the Gunawage Control Cannabis Act. And I guess one of my questions to you was on enforcement. So I guess um, I wondered um, how does the community's moratorium on this impact? Um, and in terms of the peacekeepers, you know, what's going to be their role? And, you know, because there's going to be some shifts. Mm -hmm. Well, I mentioned earlier that we did go to visit other communities, and that was really the, the basis for the moratorium. Um, you know, there are other communities that have a significant number of unlicensed dispensaries in their own community, and it's certainly something that we didn't want to have here in Gunawage. So that was the whole point of having the uh, moratorium on any sort of production or um, dispensaries. So that was that that was really the. Um, I, as I mentioned, the impetus for, for what we're, we're doing. Uh, we realize, you know, as, as both Joe and Eric have mentioned, that uh, it will be legal certainly all around us. And, you know, there, there are things that we want to have in place in the community before the federal legislation comes into play. And in terms of the peacekeepers? And with regards to the peacekeepers, they've, they've mentioned to us, and I believe they've probably mentioned it publicly, that um, they're going to be cracking down on any unlicensed uh, product. So that that's even the case after uh, October 17th, uh, 2018, which is the date of legalization. You know, everybody thinks, okay, legalization is going to be a free-for-all. That's not the case. It's still going to be very strictly regulated. Um, and therefore, if it's not licensed, if you don't have a license, License to sell the product, even if it's you know a product that comes from a licensed producer. If you don't have a license to sell the product, you are breaching the criminal code. And as we know, the uh, the criminal code is a, a law of general application that does apply to the territory. The peacekeepers have an obligation to enforce it, and um, and that's what they're going to do. Uh, I'll ask, I'll save the rest of my uh, peacekeeper questions for John D on Monday's peacekeeper update. Okay. So <laughs> be prepared, John D. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to mention is that we, again, we are having info sessions that will be on August 21st and 28th, and they're 
both starting at 6 o'clock and those are going to be at the Golden Age Club and if people are want to know more about what the uh, draft law is all about you're more than welcome to attend and we really encourage everyone that has any questions about it to uh, to make sure that they're able to get there. Yeah, once again, I, I know I said it earlier, but if somebody's just tuning in now, the info session is not the debate for the, the law. This is to try and have people understand what the law is, uh, you know, uh, trying to accomplish. What are some of the things that are in the law that, uh, you know, so it's it's not the debate to say, well, that, let's let's change that. That's to come. This is for for information. Understand what's going on. You know, be clear on on what it means to Kahnawaga. Be clear that if we don't have a law the complete federal law and provincial regulations. That's all we'll have here. And then we'll have to uh, govern ourselves accordingly. And we've seen in the past that that is just not workable and certainly not acceptable. And we've seen that in the surveys as well. People do want something here in terms of how we we make our own decision on this. But um, there, there's lots, there, that's why we, originally there was one, one info session scheduled, but we said right away that, you know what, let's have it two weeks in a row. And then, because we have to hustle to get that legislation in. There's still that part of it. So by September, if all goes well, we can make the, uh, you know, have the community decision-making process begin. The draft is there. We really urge people to go. You can go to gahnawaga.com, which is the, the website, and there's a link that brings you to the Legislative Coordinating Commission website, which uh, is gahnawagamakingdecisions.com. But go to the MCK website, gahnawaga.com. It's right there on the page. It sends you the links. It sends you the law. It sends you the comments that people made, and uh, which then were translated into the latest draft. And uh, don't be shy to ask questions. You know, uh, Chief Kirby's there uh, every day. Gina Deer's the other portfolio chief. Ask. Because I think that's the biggest thing to this is ask questions and not be afraid to ask questions because sometimes those questions will bring up a discussion. And, uh, you know, I can talk to people about it and whether we're pro or, or against, you know. And, and uh, from there, you get some interesting dialogue. <laughs> I, I think if I, if I can cut in, it's interesting you say that because... There was, a, you know, the, the working group made a presentation with chief and council yesterday, and they had a million questions, and some of that actually turned into a little, I'm not sure about this, and it's exactly what you say, the, the fear of the unknown, so we better have answers, and better, and the community needs to have this information. And, and I think it's very difficult sometimes for, for different people to see the larger picture of this, you know, and that's why, for me, it was clear, but I've been involved in this field for a number of years and tons of training. So for me, I was able to look at alcohol, look at tobacco, look at what's going on in the food industry that's killing us. You know, just, just to say, but majority of people don't, don't look at things that way. So it's kind of, you know, you have to create that big picture. And we're not going to have every answers with one law. That, you know, and, and I think that's something, too. You know, and over the past year, we've certainly put out um, many press releases. There's been things on the, the website. You know, we've done, we've been here several times. We've... Uh, you know, done the um, newspaper interviews. And of course, you know, we're not reaching everyone. You know, we are looking at, you know, what we need to do to make sure that we have an informed community. And as Joe had mentioned earlier, when we did do information, uh, we had ads that had gone out last spring. The more information that people had, the better understanding that they had of, of what we're doing here. And I think that's important. Plus, it gets a chance, and, and you know, ask the question on needs. But people have to say their needs. What do they think they, that they need this to do? Mm -hmm. You know, do we be strict? Do we open it up? Do we? What are our lessons learned to date in other fields? You know, and I think that's important too to have that dialogue. And and it may have started one way, but I'm sure the end product's going to be totally different, right? Yeah, and I think uh, that's one of the things that we encountered. Uh, we realized that uh, even in the, the community, um, you know, different people are divided about um, how to approach this from a legal perspective. Um, you have a certain segment of the community that is completely anti-drug and uh, for very good reason. And then you have, uh, you know, people who are more entrepreneurial that want to see as little regulation as possible. So basically, um, you know, I guess we made uh, everybody unhappy by... by 
uh, legalizing or allowing uh, cannabis legalization here because it's going to be all around us, but doing so v uh, within a very strict uh, framework of, of regulation. So, um, uh, you know, that's that's probably the, the best way uh, to, to approach this at this point um, because, you know, let's not forget, this isn't a remote community. Um, as Joel and Rhonda said, you know, the product is going to be all around us. Even if, you know, there was um, zero tolerance uh, on drugs that was upheld here, um, there would be nothing stopping somebody from going going outside the community to purchase the product or and let's not kill ourselves drugs drugs are in the community like any other community they're here and they're and it's it's not the legal kind right so um, we felt that uh, our council felt that it was best to uh, to approach this from a, a strict regulatory uh, perspective um, and also allow for for business opportunities at the same time and, and I think that's all that we can ask for at this point, because it's either that or following all the other regulations, which are a little bit more, as they would say, loosey-goosey than what we would like here in the community. And, and given all of the uh, information that we've put out, you know, after um, these past two years, we've certainly had a lot of requests from other communities, uh, business opportunities, you know, uh, individuals. So. You know, we, there are things that we are looking at, but um, again, it's if, if anyone is, you know, wants some answers about the uh, the draft law that we have, the two sessions that will be held are August. I keep wanting to say October, <laughs> August twenty first and August twenty eighth. Yeah, and they're both Tuesdays. Okay. Yeah, for those who just what twenty what uh, <laughs> the next two Tuesdays, not this coming one, the two after that. I'll, I'll just ask a question on 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 the. Uh, what is going to be the process for those nights? Is there going to be a little presentation? Is there going to be information? Is it just going to get into dialogue? I'm just curious. Well, I think we've given other presentations, and I think uh, that might help to start the dialogue. You know, it, it, giving the presentation, some questions might be answered right there. So we'll do a PowerPoint presentation okay. about the history, where we started, you know, what we've done over the past uh, two years, and what the next steps are. And then from there, go into a question and answer, hoping that the yeah. community will come okay. with, with questions. I'm sure they will. I mean, I'm, it's, sure. It's a, it's a, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. It's a topic that uh, has gained a lot of interest. Uh, I, I, I swear I never saw this coming with the, uh, the Liberal government and no. having that as a platform no. when they ran for office and, you know, actually following through and, and just unanimously supporting it as a party. And it's made it difficult for everybody because... Uh, you know, it was gonna. I think it was gonna happen sooner or later. But it's like they just said, "Here's the commitment. Here's the date. Go." Mm -hmm. And and it's really difficult to be uh, making legislation under the gun when we didn't understand. You know, everybody's trying to learn. Yeah. And, and everybody learns at different levels, politically, socially, medically, and, and all of these things. It's a real challenge. That uh, you know, I, I believe I believe strongly in this community's ability to make good decisions you know if they if we put our minds to it and, and get involved uh, I've seen it in the CDMP where sometimes you have varying uh, points of view but at the end of the day it seems to find a middle ground after you know proper debate and respectful debate so hopefully you know we're going to see a continuation of that in the, in the next little while and as for the information sessions well there's there's lots to talk about that's for sure I'm going to ask a question um, in terms of the CDMP what's the process and what's the length of time like what's your target date because I, this is coming fast well, with the two information sessions, I mean, it, it's not to say that there possibly would be another session added, depending on the number of people that come in and how far we get. But um, the CDMP hearing would be held afterwards, and it, it that too could possibly take one or two evenings. But we are trying; we are looking at um, having it completed before that federal date. And that so date one more time. <laughs> October 17th. <laughs> October 17th. So um, on the plus side, and, and I, I not only sit on this working group, but I, I sit on the Legislative Coordinating Commission uh, group as well. And um, with the, the completion of the Ganyaka Hag of Ganawaga law, uh, at this point, 
there's a real opportunity because there's nothing else sit, like in the way. There's not two or three things going on. We can concentrate on, on this and get it done. And hopefully, um, I mean, we, we may have to meet every week for or after Labor Day for, for a few weeks, but um, that's what we need to do. We have to do what we need to do to make sure that... Uh, so then once the community law is in place, then that is what the community is going to follow. And we also have to then make sure that the regulations themselves okay. are mm -hmm. there in okay. place because the, the law would create uh, the ability to regulate. Mm -hmm. So and then law, the regulations, regulations and implementation. Impl implementation. Yeah. So there's still a ways to go. Yeah, I mean, but this would just make sure the law is in place, exactly. which is the time, the, the, the clock's ticking, I mm -hmm. guess, on that particular part, but then the other work continues. So and, we're and talking a long process. And the moratorium stays in place until such time as the, the law is finally adopted. Okay, because that was my other question. <laughs> as I, saw, I know some moratoriums that gone on for years and years, and, and you know <laughs> legally they don't. So just commenting. So I know they're not supposed to. I, I, so, you know, it, it was because I hear people talk about that. You know, people say that. How is that possible? You know, you have some very smart people in our community, too. So, you know, people will ask those uh, kinds of questions. Um, and I guess that's all I have for questions. Um, is there any other things that you wanted to share? We have about four minutes left. We're good. Um, just to remind everyone that uh, we are looking at the uh, draft law. It's available on the website for anybody uh, to take a look at and to come to our two sessions that we're having on August 21st and 28th. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and don't be shy. The, uh, Gina's on vacation this week, but okay. she'll be back on, on Monday. And uh, the council meetings um, haven't started yet. That'll be after, okay. the, uh, after the holiday. Actually, and we're having one on one August that is, on 27th. To take okay. care of, uh, you know, some land allotments and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But the, the, the general council meetings will begin uh, after Labor Day. September 10th. Yep. Oh, so, okay. so in the meantime, that there, there's actually a little more availability of the chiefs with the, the, the huge schedules that uh, are expected. And, and we have, the of course, half of the council is new. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of uh, orientation that's been going on. But, but the two portfolio chiefs are veterans. Yeah. So they can make themselves, I think, a little more Because that was going to be my question if somebody couldn't make either session because I know this time of year is a little bit hectic with sports and I keep checking my phone because I'm looking for scores of different things with people out all over the country. I can't even say just in Ontario. Um, but I guess I was wondering if people wanted to contact you individually, can people do that? You Absolutely. Know? Because, and would you encourage people to do that in case they couldn't make those for dates? Sure. For sure. Because I think that's just as important. People may have something to say but may not want to or are not available to do so on either of those dates. Mm -hmm. Well, since we have about another 30 seconds or so, you go, I, just want, I, I just wanted to mention, since we, we've, I think, covered it all off, and you mentioned sports, yes, and you mentioned all the busy times. Well, uh, Radzana, yes, Harry Rice, <laughs> yes. who is one of the new, uh, uh, new chiefs, um, he had a commitment a long time ago that he was going to be taking uh, uh, his team to Hawaii. Well, he's leaving tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> the team leaves tomorrow, so I, I just want to make it clear. And you know, I, I know people will say, "Oh, look at that! Already the council is sending." Out. No, this was already in the works, and so he's uh, following through on his commitment. We wish because uh, it's a girls' team, a we, girls' we, soccer team. Yeah. <laughs> in case people don't yes. know, yes, and uh, we wish them all the best. They're going to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Waikiki actually is uh, where the tournament is located, so they leave on the weekend, and the tournament actually takes place later in the week and then they'll be back afterward and Harry will have I'm sure a full report and uh, he's pretty excited it's, I, it, it, it's interesting because I posted a picture this week of the first group of girls who started the traveling and we're going back quite a number of years and a lot of those girls are now moms and uh, and it was interesting how far the programs come and how talented this community is not on just this sport but every sport when I know? was a kid we never got out of Gahnawage really we barely got out of yes. the neighborhood yes so it's a different era That's and, and I think it's a exciting for, for our kids to have these opportunities. That's why we tell people stay away from drugs. No. <laughs> I should get that plug in. <laughs> and that, you know, last year I had the opportunity to um, 
watch the Indigenous Games and all of the athletes that we had from our community. It's just amazing, you know, the abilities that they have and the opportunities are there and we certainly encourage everyone to keep up with uh, all of their sports. I got to watch the uh, third period of the Pee Wee uh, National First Nations team. Uh, one of the parents put a live feed on this morning and it was exciting and they are going to the gold medal game against Wonderful. Team Ontario tomorrow. We have three Gunwage players on that team. Excellent. And we got the Banthams playing tonight and on Saturday we have uh, the Gunwage Mohawks taking on Ottawa. So uh, let's uh, get out there. Lots of sports going on. Uh, coming up next with the 1 o'clock news is Gahalusil Horn. Have a great afternoon everybody. Onigiwahi.